Hello there folks and welcome back to the Chaps Guide. Now today I'm going on a bit of an experiment. I've bought a pair of shoes from eBay just to show how it's possible to buy a good quality pair of shoes for an absolute rock bottom price and how you can convert those shoes either to keep them for yourself or to sell them on for a profit with a view to incre increasingly trading up to the pair of shoes that you might wish to have. So keep trading up, keep trading up. You might have high aspirations. You might want a pair of, you know, top end churches or Crockett and Jones or even beyond that, but it can start at the bottom. So I set myself a challenge of buying a pair of shoes for one pound, one British pound. So a bit of research on eBay and I found myself this pair, right? So this is a pair of black Capto Oxfords which I purchased from eBay just the other day for 99 pence. So less than one British pound. And it's a standard pair of black Cato Oxfords. It's got um, leather soles, leather uppers, and it's by the manufacturer Church, actually, but they were manufactured for a company, an old tailor's company called Austin Reed, which has gone into liquidation in the UK. It used to have high street stores selling you know, suits and things like that. Relatively modest prices, you know, not high-end sartorial stuff, but the sort of thing you'd go in and buy a jacket, sports jacket, something like that, suit, off the peg, uh, wedding apparel, that sort of thing, and, you know, that would be the place you'd go to buy that. Bought a few shirts there myself over the years, not too bad, but clearly they contracted out the, the manufacture of shoes to other companies. They didn't have the capacity or capability to manufacture their own footwear, and in this instance, they contracted church. Now church's name is actually stamped inside the shoe and on the sole in fact uh, just to prove that it is church but I bought these for 99p. Now my goal here is to just give these a wash and brush up maybe a little bit of a polish I'll be able to show you a before and after and then we'll sell it on on eBay and in a week's time I'll meet you back here and I will tell you how much money we've been able to achieve. And I'm hoping to make a modest profit clearly a profit I've only paid 99p if I can, you know, increase that money, I can then invest it into another pair of shoes. I'm not necessarily going to do that, but I just want to show you how it's possible with a very, very modest budget to buy a pair of good shoes. I mean, for 99 pence, this is an all leather pair of British manufactured shoes, which actually I could wear right now. I could wear them with a suit, you know, the black cap to Oxford, possibly the most versatile of all men's shoes. Could start wearing them straight away. I don't intend to do that. I'm going to give them a quick, uh, you know, tart up and then we will sell them on and you'll be interested to know how much I make. So let's do the shoes up, get them on eBay and we'll see what we can do. Okay, so here they are. It's a pair of lovely Oxford Capto shoes. Uh, as we say, churches manufactured for the British sartorial outlet called Austin Reed and we're going to crack on and we're going to sort them out get them ready for resale on on eBay right now now the shoes are not in horrible condition at all as you can see they they're not uh, the finest grain of leather they're some sort of sheer leather almost a version of patent I would suggest so I, I don't intend doing a full leather rejuvenation or anything like that on these shoes I'm simply going to apply some basic products just to bring them up to looking their very best and uh, and we'll take it from there so let's take one of the shoes away we'll take the left one away and we'll work on the right one then we'll see some sort of comparison at the end to see if it's uh, our efforts our endeavors have been worth the the work so first thing i'm going to do as ever i'm going to put a shoe tree inside the shoe just to make it a lot easier for us when we're working on the shoe keeps the shoe in form in shape and just makes it nice and easy for us to get to work on it. So there we go, there's the shoe. As I say, it's not in bad condition. A little bit of a thread there I need to cut off. Uh, but other than that, it's looking good. Um, not too dirty, it's fairly good condition. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do, because I'm not gonna mess around with these, I can see that it's not your normal sort of full grain leather. So applying something like a conditioning agent I would ordinarily use some Sophia Renovator but in this case can't see any value to that at all 
because there's no leather here that it's going to soak into in the same way that a traditional high grain leather will. So I, what I am going to do to improve its colour and to sort of bring it back to life, give it a bit more sparkle, I'm going to use some shoe cream, some shoe chorus cream. And this is Sophia Pomodia shoe cream. It's, uh, you know, kind of an industry standard, it's very good quality stuff. I use it all the time. If you've seen any of my other shoe videos, you would have seen me using this. And it's got quite a lot of colour pigmentation within it. So if you've got a pair of shoes that you want to bring back to a bit of life, a great way of doing that is apply some shoe cream. Much more pigment, pigment in shoe cream than there is in wax polish. Although most people would, as a, as a sort of industry standard, go for the wax polish first. That's the wrong thing to do. Cream polish, always the best for bringing colour, bringing a bit of life back to those shoes. So the way to apply it, really quite simple. Get yourself a cotton cloth, wrap it around the fingers, just the way I'm doing here. And uh, yeah, we apply as simply as that. There we go. I'm just gonna whap it all over the shoe. Liberal amount. And as I say, I can tell right away that this is not you know, a green leather because to be honest, this stuff is um, skimming over the leather. So it's not really doing a great deal of rejuvenation for us. But, you know, as I say, I'm going to invest a little bit of time in it just so that the potential for a better return, because this is the name of the game when it comes to, you know, shoes, buying shoes used on eBay, other places like that. Other auction sites, of course, are available. What we try to do is flip it and uh, we move on up and we get a better pair of shoes. Anyway, isn't it nice to be doing some shoe work in the garden? It's, it's a lovely spring day here in the UK. It's, uh, it's May and uh, glorious. It's only, it's only quarter to 10 in the morning and uh, the day is absolutely spectacular. So I think after I've done these shoes, I should do some more recreational activities. So when you apply something like the shoe polish, what you need to do is just to leave it set and to steep into the leather for a little while. Now in this case, I'm not messing around. I've already said this isn't the best leather in the world. Uh, even though it's made by one of the country's top shoe manufacturers, it was obviously made to a budget for Austin Reed, who are uh, no longer in business. They're now defunct. They went bankrupt a couple of years ago and their shops all closed down throughout the UK. Um, they still have some sort of online presence, I think, where they sell, you know, some uh, shirts and things like that. And undoubtedly, at some point in the past, when they were still trading as a going concern, uh, they would have contracted Church to manufacture, you know, this particular model of shoe. It's a black cap to Oxford. It's probably the most popular, the most versatile men's shoe. So I imagine they would have manufactured these in their tens of thousands for Austin Reed to a budget. And, uh, and then they would have been sold through their stores, you know, for, for wearing with their suits and all the other things that they sold through Austin Reed. So, having allowed the shoe now to just, you know, let, let that Pomodier shoe cream polish um, settle in, I'm just gonna whip over it with the brush. I'm not expecting great results, as I say, because I know the leather isn't awesome. But, you know, when you work on a pair of shoes, you expect something back for your effort. And even when it's not the best leather in the world, I expect we'll see an improvement at the end. We'll wait and see. Let's reserve some judgment. We'll see some, some life coming back to the shoe, if nothing else. And there we are. So, as I say, it was something of a shiny shoe anyway. A bit of a, a patent -y effort. But uh, it's got some life coming back into it. A bit more, bit more zing to it. So straight off the back of that, I'm getting the next product I'm going to use, and that's Sophia Wax Polish. You know, with a quality shoe like this, you could use any wax polish, but I'm using Sophia because it's what I've got. Sophia, very high quality, um, non-petroleum based polish, so it's good to use on any quality of shoe, even if you've got the most expensive pair of shoes. You know, what you're going to use, you can use Sophia comfortably without any worries or concerns about it affecting the shoe other than in a positive way. But in this case, we're not expecting miracles because the shoe is not fantastic. So all you need to do, get polish on the end of your, your, your fingers like that and apply it to the shoe. And in this instance, it's going on, as I say, nice and easy because of the nature of the leather that we're working with. What we're looking to do now is to get a nice little shine on this. 
because as I say these are going to be so straight on back through eBay and if you will this is kind of an investment um, trade pair of shoes because I got them so incredibly cheap 99 pence you know for a pair of black cap to Oxfords with loads of life left in those soles you know those soles are not worn out by any means whatsoever there's a lot of life left in them but for me I am a bit of a perfectionist when it comes to my shoes and I like full grain leather I don't like this sort of patenty effect which has been you know applied to these shoes um, it's not the sort of leather I would expect for me and uh, that's it I'm not going to do any more than that I'm not putting a huge amount of effort into these as you can see because I want to get these traded on and make an investment improvement on my 99 pence so as with the application of the shoe cream just leave the shoe for a little while allow that polish to set to dry uh, to form a sort of a misty appearance and it's already happened because I applied it very lightly I didn't apply it very thickly it's a warm summer's day with a light breeze perfect drying day for polish so no messing around straight in with the brush apply the brush to the leather or the shoe rather over again and uh, you know we're going to see this shoe come back to its condition from a long long time ago I think now as I say it's not actually patent in the way that I would expect patent but I would imagine these shoes would have been sort of retailed as some sort of easy care shoe you know not requiring the full gamut of uh, work that perhaps a shoe might require if it's full grain leather you know with regular polishing things like that so there we go it's kind of done it's had a cream polish it's had a wax polish I might because I'm in the mood just consider doing some improvements to that toe cap because cap to Oxford's are sold on the cap toe so I've got some Sophia Medaldio mirror gloss polish here this is a kind of aberration of the normal wax polish because it's drier there's less moisture in it and as a consequence of that it allows you to build up the layers and layers of polish needed on the hard areas like the toe cap which are required to form a mirror shine really quickly so that's what I'm going to do I am going to just apply this right now and uh, hopefully we'll see a mirror shine come up very quickly or an improvement to the shine because it's you know it's quite a shiny shoe anyway that mirror shine might just be the extra few bids that we need to allow us to trade up to the next pair of shoes you know effectively uh, and efficiently so let's crack on and apply that mirror shine A mistake a lot of people make when they're selling off old shoes they take them straight out of the wardrobe take a photograph they're in a dusty terrible condition and uh, they think that they can you know return a bit of money on it to be honest a very small investment of your time you've probably already got the polish in the house anyway even if you just dusted the shoes off it, they would look a whole lot better and uh, when it comes to the purchasing it's all in the eyes isn't it you look at the photographs and uh, that's what kind of determines how much you think you're going to invest in that pair of shoes okay folks so there we go we've now been cracking away at that for a little over five minutes and let's have a look well you know the proof is in the pudding I'll leave it to you to decide what you think that that mirror shine looks like it went on fairly well it was easy to put on because the material the leather was quite sheer it didn't have any grains in it but uh, I think you'll agree it did go on it did take the polish and there is a great shine to it there now obviously to compare let's have a look at its buddy as I say that it's a shiny type of shoe anyway but uh, hopefully you'll agree there that there is a significant difference and there's a depth of shine to this right shoe that is you know going to be a game changer when it comes to selling it on so from our 99 pence I think we made a fairly good investment and to be fair this pair of shoes here you know in this condition 
you could wear with a, di with a dinner jacket out for an evening, you could wear it with your suit, you could wear it to a formal event where you're meeting the Prime Minister or the President uh, because it's got that deep shine and luster which is so desirable when it comes to making a first impression through your footwear. And what was that? That was 99 pence for the shoe and 15 minutes of my time to get that level of shine. Of course, another 15 minutes in this shoe will make this one look equally as good, but uh, I think you'll agree that looks pretty good. Now I'm just going to carry on, finish the other one, and we'll get on to the next phase of selling these beauties on eBay to trade up to our next pair. Well chaps, welcome back. Now a week has passed since we last met. Remarkably, it seems like just a few minutes, doesn't it? And those shoes have been on eBay for seven days and I set the initial bidding relatively high in the 20, 20 odd pound bracket, which was recommended by eBay. And today they sold for 26 pounds. So from my initial investment of 99 pence, I now have a much larger nest egg, 26 pounds, should I wish to invest them into another pair of shoes. And then you can see I could keep continually trading up that shoe ladder to get to my destination, wherever that may be. Now, I don't intend to do that because I've got quite a large enough shoe collection as it is. This was just a bit of a challenge. I just wanted to show how it is possible to take a tiny amount of money and first of all, to buy a good pair of shoes, but then how you can convert those shoes into whatever you want. You know, you can keep trading up and trading up as long as you buy sensibly. You spend plenty of time researching your purchases and you know what you're buying. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give me a thumbs up to let me know you've enjoyed it. And when you're there, click that subscribe button as well. That way you won't miss any of the future material that we produce here at the Chaps Guide. And uh, I look forward to seeing you again in the future for more videos on men's footwear, men's style, self-development tips, and anything that can help your journey to being the best chap that you can be. Until then, please take care, and I'll see you again very soon here at the Chaps Guide.